Hi besties, it's LB Twink and welcome back to my channel. That was unfortunate. I hate that. As you guys could tell by the title, today we are doing something new called Sip and Sew. I got the inspiration, one from you guys, but two, there's another YouTuber on this platform named Megan Hughes who does like a whole like drunk sewing series on her channel, which is really dope. Go check it out. That's where I got the inspiration to do this. Welcome. Cheers. That's what today is going to be. Before we get into this video, if you guys don't know me, hi, my name is Thomas. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. And right now, literally guys, pause the video, give me a thumbs up because that literally helps me so much as a content creator this being literally my full-time job this is my thing um please do that because it really helps me out in today's video I, mean, I don't know if you guys were able to tell by the bottle i'm drinking some six dollar sparkling wine from trader joe's your boy's balling on a budget i'm not even a wine drinker i'm not a wine connoisseur i wanted white claws for this video but you know what like i said we're balling on a budget Yesterday I went live on my YouTube channel, which if you guys never want to miss out on my lives, make sure you have that bell notification hit because that will notify you whenever I do live stream. YouTube be shady sometimes and not telling everyone. You won't know unless you have those bell notifications turned on. I really like live streaming and making these tops for you guys, but you know, no. I like to do a good sit down little moment in front of the camera. I could already feel this alcohol processing in my stomach. Sparkling wine has notes of grapes because that's what it's made out of. <laughs> Let me know if you guys want this to be a series on my channel. See, I think this would be a fun little series to do to come back and to do with like different drinks. Instead of alcohol next time, Thomas, we could do something wholesome, like a twink drink from Starbucks. As you guys know, this month is Pride Month. And as you guys know, I am a fat. I am part of the LGBTQIA plus community. In today's video, we can pay homage to this whole Pride theme we got going on this month. I'm going to be making an iconic top out of rainbows gay rights i have like one glass poured but it looks like we already made a dent in the bottle i'd be good at making dents in bottles i literally have only been filming for like seven minutes but to be honest guys i'm already kind of feeling this one so i feel like this video is gonna take a nasty ass turn you know what fuck it let's get set up i'm gonna go ahead and iron these out and get them all pinned up another cheers to y'all the first topic that we have for the day is here's my babe Let's just start with the most cutthroat and deep question that we could receive on this channel. How my love life is going? And the short answer is it's non-existent. To quite simply put it, I just find dating, especially around my age right now, so like what am I right now? I'm 21. I feel like dating in the gay community is just a very interesting kind of thing to do. We got a lot going on. I just like haven't met my person yet. Maybe I have. I do not know. And I'm sure if you guys have been keeping up with my YouTube channel for a minute, my last relationship really just was was just like not it. There's a lot of stuff that I could get into that I don't really want to get into in ways that like 100% emotionally scarred me. But it also taught me a lot about people and especially men and how toxic masculinity, like those kind of men, those are the ones you want to avoid in the community. I'm sorry, but we do not fuck with anyone on a mask for mask kind of vibe. It's really never been my vibe. Like I said, I'm at a place in my life where I have so much on my plate. Like as much as like a relationship sounds fun and all like that. Since I've been 18, I have fully thrown myself into relationships um, every year and I have never really admitted this to myself, especially online. I kind of did that because one, my HIV status and two, it kind of almost was a safety net for me. Like I was doing it because I felt like I would never, to quite simply put it, find someone who would want to be in a relationship with me. And like, I know that might sound foul, but it made me feel better. Damn, that's kind of fucking toxic. I don't think it's that toxic. No, I'm not saying that I'm fully a bitter ass bitch and that I don't ever want to date. What I'm saying here is that I've had the bare minimum and I don't want the bare minimum. I feel like if someone wants to date me, you know what? The sparkling wine got me talking. I'm not trying to actively seek that out anymore because it brought really shitty people into my life. And you know, I'm just not with that anymore. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not saying all men are disappointing, but I'm saying I've yet to meet one that doesn't disappoint me. I ain't rushing anything. The thought of even dating right now just makes me feel so emotionally unstable just by the idea of it. Oh, I got one part of my iconic top pinned. So now I'm going to check this glass. That was a bold idea. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one set up and then we can start sewing. Enough about LB Twink's love life. No. All 
Alrighty, so we have successfully prepped those two pieces. And something else I want to add, because like now I'm really thinking about it when it comes to my love life and like a reason it's not going, is because like fully too, I've hit a point where I've accepted the fact that like men have traumatized me so much. That's on trauma. Yeah. We are going to set up on my little sew machine. For anyone curious, the sewing machine I use is a Singer Heavy Duty. This is the 4411 model. I only be using like two different kinds of stitches when I sew. And that's just the fucking tea. Because this is a sip and sew. I'm gonna chug this drink. I'll be twink drunk making a top. I forgot to chug. <laughs> This is all gonna hit me way too quick. Honestly, I'm so glad someone asked me about my love life because like no one has. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about it, but if I bring it up, that just seems like emotional, you know? I'm only one wine glass deep and okay, I ain't even lie. Bitch, I'm on one right now. Some of your most fun times you can have drunk is when you're drunk alone. They're really not. Not saying that I'm not having fun because I'm literally having so much fun right now. What does my YouTube channel come to? I fucking love pin cushions, man. I really do. Bada bing, bada boom, and they soak. I'm kind of really proud of my iconic tops because these are tops that I designed originally 100% myself from my fucking brain. And what I mean by that is I literally got inspired for this specific kind of top that I make, which is like most of the tops I make, I call them iconic tops. I had a vision of this one day and then made it happen. Right back here, this is the top that I made on yesterday's live stream. So now we're on glass number two. I wonder if anyone else drinks with me. How did I almost kill this bottle? Someone asked, who are my favorite YouTubers to watch? I don't get this question a lot. I'm kind of excited to answer it. Number one that came to mind is Rawr Knups. She is one of the people who, before I started my YouTube channel, she's this girl, she's a OnlyFans baddie, iconic ass story times, and honestly, I've been watching her videos for a cool minute. Okay, she's real as fuck. Besides her, a couple other YouTubers I like to watch. Okay, love Matthew, Bentley Blaze, literally, he's a fucking icon. Another YouTuber I like to watch, Caitlyn Ray. She has literally the most entertaining vlogs because I'm one of those bitches who likes to watch like true crimes and who likes to watch just like stuff to do with like conspiracy theories. I've been listening to a lot of the H3 podcasts with Trisha Paytas. I watched them while I did my makeup earlier. Right now too guys we're just doing a lot more pinning and ironing. Fuck, I'm slurring my words. <laughs> Pinning and ironing. Of course, my roommate Francis Way. I always watch her videos when she puts them up too because this is Bestie. Always gotta support Bestie. Just to give you guys a little preview of what like my recommended on YouTube looks like, this is like kind of, there's a lot of scary stories. I'm really into scary stories and I have no shame. Um, scary stories, drama, YouTube analytics, more drama, lo-fi. <laughs> thing I'm really bad at is always leaving my iron plugged in, which is a really bad thing to be bad at, you know? I'm just gonna be the first one here to tell you I'm drunk. So we are almost done with our base pieces, amazingly enough. One of the reasons I chose to do iconic tops tonight, I started with these and these are like a staple to my brand. What really even started the brand were these tops and that's why I make so many of them. But I have gotten these down to such a fucking system, guys. I don't know if y'all just saw me like stitch stitch up in this bitch. It really just gets me how I know my family watches my YouTube. I know it's not even just my family. I know it's my family's friends. So if you're a part of my family's friends, hi, thanks for watching my channel. I hope you don't think that I'm a mess. I think I'm just a twink just trying to live his best fucking life. Someone messaged me on Instagram yesterday and told me if you leave the pins in while you're sewing, my needle on the machine hits one of my pins, it could shatter and literally poke my eye. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, I've shattered a needle like maybe once or twice in my sewing career. <laughs> Random thoughts. But yeah, this has been a fun little video. The whole reason I kind of wanted to start this series is because a lot of the reason that I've kind of over the past six months kind of stepped away from doing YouTube so consistently. As of lately, I've been doing it, but that's because a bitch has been working hard. I feel like sewing took over a really big part of my life. Sometimes I feel very overwhelmed trying to keep up with everything, but you know, this combines the best of both worlds. And on top of it, I gotta get drunk. I probably was gonna get drunk anyways, but at least now I'm doing it in a productive nature. And productive 
productive king. I literally sit in my room with my silly little weeds and sew my silly little clothes and put it on silly little Depop who always likes to leave me on red on Instagram even though they offered me to join Depop to be in the VIP program but they always leave my messages on red even though I met them when they were just a little starter because I had a friend who had a connection they still leave me on red. This next one is T. Someone asked me what was it like being on Jubilee. If you guys don't know I was on a Jubilee video. Do all HIV positive people think the same? And you know honestly I've had some stuff to say about this video that I just have not said. I fully made a whole story time on this. But when it comes to like how things were like when I was on Jubilee, it wasn't even that good of an experience. That's a lie. It was a fantastic experience meeting people, connecting on like issues that we all had. That was amazing because I've literally never had that in my life. But when we're talking on a whole production value, I've grown up in LA, I'm sorry, and I'm not here to just like start shit. I'm telling you they didn't pay us, which is like honestly they're making fucking bag off my trauma and like I just have to sit here knowing I signed away for that. I mean, that's fine. That's on me. But like also at the same time, like do better Jubilee. It was cool and all. And like, I loved being there for the activism aspect and like speaking on social issues. I'm like, okay, I know how AdSense works. Love, do better. I wouldn't do it again. It was cool for the one time, but the one time only. And honestly, have you seen their comment section on that video? That shit's foul. But I mean, that's not their fault. And I literally genuinely asked them, like, call me LB Twink, and they just did not do that. So, like, I don't fuck with them for that. I would never be in another Jubilee video. The casting process and stuff, that was pretty, like, easy. I was very niche in what they were looking for, which were... HIV positive people. So it was a pretty easy booking to get. If you're in LA and you want to be on Jubilee, let me let you in on a little life hack on how I got on there. They have in their YouTube description, like, do you want to be in Jubilee video? Okay, part of me is like, Thomas, why are you operating a sewing machine under this much influence? Because I'm an influencer. Why? I low key make dad jokes. But we finished our base pieces, so let me show you guys. Behind me I have the two pieces that I'm gonna make. I wanted to come and just say cheers to you guys. Thank you for being here with me on my channel. Here are the pieces. And so right now, I am going to attach the hardware pieces. So what I usually do is I put a middle piece on, I put a connector on one side, and I put chain on the other, and like bam, I have an iconic top. Fuck. Sparkling wine makes you burpy as fuck. Who knew? <laughs> Guys, Maddie is FaceTiming me. Let's answer. <gasps> hi. Bitch. Bitch, what? What are you doing? Wanna say hi to my YouTube channel? Say <laughs> hi. Hi. I bought a bottle of sparkling <laughs> wine and I'm sewing. <laughs> Where are you going? Where am I going, bitch? I'm home. Okay, she's drinking Modelo, ew. But I'm gonna sew pieces <laughs> and just like get drunk. Or maybe not always drunk, but I'm gonna sip on something. So tonight was sparkling wine. Oh, I love that. Maddie said she has a question for my video. So, Thomas, what is your biggest inspiration in sewing? The bag. What is your biggest artistic inspiration? <laughs> the money. <laughs> <laughs> just the money in my mind. <laughs> I love that. At least I'm honest. <laughs> now besties are offering for me to go out. And you know what? I love my best friends. Like, that's really awesome of them that like they'll, they literally offered to buy my drinks. So we're gonna get going and we're just gonna put all the hardware on the top and like you're just gonna watch me do that. Part of drunk sewing is that there's really no structure here. There's literally none at all. You know, that's one thing I really do love about YouTube. Hardware. Another piece, not me being the literal brand owner. Oh my god, I have to cut chain right now. What it's like to cut chain with LB Twink. This is the chain I use, and I take my big ass pliers. If y'all ever need to cut a lock off something, use this information what you will. You could get these for like 15 bucks at Home Depot. And I just cut the chain. I feel like I've also come to a point with my pieces where I kind of just do everything by eye because I know how the measurements work. I might be a little lit right now, but I still know how measurements work. Next question that I got is, how is OnlyFans going? Damn, I just spit everywhere. And you know, I would definitely tell you guys how my OnlyFans is going. It's the fact that it's on sale right now for 50% off. If you want to know how it's going, then I think you should just go subscribe to my OnlyFans. It will be linked down in my link tree below. 
whoever has this top at the end of the day, I mean, like, I'm sure you've watched this video and y'all know I made this drunk. Trust me, made with so much love. It really is. There's a lot of love going into this right now, whether you know it or not. You know, one thing I do that will, like, go back through and, like, ch double check them and make sure there's not any, like, hanging thread. Also, too, I missed a lot of hanging thread, so you might find some hanging thread on my pieces. But that just adds to the flair of having a couture clothing item, a one of one. I'm drunk, drunk. So we pretty much got this little hardware on. So once you have your middle pieces connected, it looks something kind of like this. Cute, now we add the hardware, and again, I just do this shit by eye. This took a lot of practice, y'all. So, like, I know I'm just sitting here doing this really quick, but let me tell you, this took so much fucking effort to get to, like, where I am now. Someone asked me any Pride Month plans. <laughs> no. I wanted to make a Pride collection this year, but to be honest, guys, I've been feeling, like, hella fucking overwhelmed with just, like, life and everything that comes along with it. And I know I feel like I'm so lucky to be doing this as a job right now. There's a lot of stuff I face on a month to month basis and a lot of like, I'm genuinely pushing my brand 24 seven, working hella fucking hard, making so many pieces. It's, it's hard running a small brand, especially when you're the whole fucking marketing behind it. I be working hard. Anyways, we literally just made an iconic top. Alrighty, so let's do a little grand reveal. If y'all do not know yet, these tops could fit a range of sizes from extra small to extra large, and it's because of the way they're sewn, and the chain makes it adjustable, and as you guys can see right now, I'm kind of making it more on the tight side. This is a motherfucking iconic top. She screams gay rights. She screams that bitch. She screams I might have made this when I was fucked. Uh, she's a little wonky, but yeah, that's an iconic top for you guys So I guess that kind of concludes drunk sewing technically because I see right here She needs a little love right there because I was being messy. But let's play is she messy or is Thomas? So with that being said, I think that is going to conclude today's episode of drunk sewing I hope you guys enjoyed this video of drunk sewing with LB twink by the time this video is posted She will be tailored up and she will be on my depop shops If you guys are interested at all in my Twinkie couture shop make sure you go shop Twinkie couture on depop I will leave all the links at the top of the description and say Twinkie couture isn't really your style I got you. I also have merch. I have my bitch. I'm baked my LB twink. I have the Still gay, still stone. And those are still available, I don't promote them too much, but my merch shop is always gonna be linked down below. Thank you guys for joining me in today's video because like, honestly, I just got lit as fuck within like an hour time frame. So there's that. Uh, I don't know if I have much more words to say. Make sure if you guys don't already, you follow me on Instagram, or at LB Twink. Follow me on TikTok at LB Twink and also follow my Twitter. I've been tweeting a lot lately. With that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and also make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. Let's go ahead and let's chug this glass before we head out. So cheers to that. I can't chug it. And on that note, and <laughs> XOXO, I'll be twenty.